few words. We've been um, having to Ringling, uh, a visiting art historian, uh, every year for almost 20 some years now. So it's very exciting. Every year we have somebody different. And uh, it's sponsored by the Liberal Arts Department and the Art History Faculty. And I want to thank Doug Chismar, who's Program Director for Liberal Arts, for all of his help. And for Kay Donahue, wherever she is, she's around, who arranges everything here. We couldn't live without her. And so it's just very, very exciting when we have these events. Um, Dr. Susan Dahl is our newest faculty member in art history, and we're thrilled that she's here, and she's going to do the introduction for Dr. Stark. I'm going to be informal, too, and not go to the mic. I'm sort of an informal kind of gal. So, um, But I'm very proud and very pleased to present my good friend and colleague, Dr. David Stark. Um, David uh, came all the way down from the great frozen north of Chicago uh, to be with us in Sarasota tonight. Uh, he works at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, he has, not only does he work in museum education there, but he is also a teacher of art history and a lecturer of art history. He belongs to many organizations who are always after him for his knowledge and expertise. As part of the museum education staff, um, I actually was in Chicago before uh, David was, and I've always been a member of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, the, it's one of the best museums in the country. It's my favorite. Um, it's actually worth going to Chicago um, to visit. Um, so I've been a member for a long time, and over the years I noticed the difference in their approach um, uh, to reaching out to the, to the public. Um, over the years there was more of a concerned effort to reach out to all members of the community in Chicago, of which there's a great diversity, uh, to reach out to um, different classes, different races, different ages, different neighborhoods in the city. And the education department um, was very instrumental in that, and David was very much a part of that. So I was very, um, it was very heartening uh, to see the museum move in that direction over the years. And um, like I said, he's done a lot to facilitate that, from working with new technology, um, working with the internet to bring the art to the people, and also in terms of lecturing to the public to bring the people to the art. Um, personally, I've known David for a very, very long time, for <clears throat> years. Um, we were graduate students together at Ohio State University way back in the days of the dinosaurs. And uh, we belong to a, a group of friends that we were not only art historians, but we were sort of united in this um, great passion for popular culture. Uh, and we would sit and talk about popular culture for hours, uh, much to the dismay of our art professors at the time, or our history professors at the time. Um, but it made us a very tight-knit group of, of friends. And I was thinking about that this week as I was waiting for um, David to come down, thinking about all that. And I was looking at, um, in my own classroom, where I see students um, kind of forge friendships and connections and relationships. And I mean, realized that some of the closest relationships or friendships that I've ever, that I've ever had um, were forged during my years in college. Um, at first, you're friends uh, with people you meet, and then your peers. And then when you leave your college, when you leave Ringling, you will be colleagues and you will be um, interacting, you will uh, call upon your friends for professional and personal advice for many, many years. So I encourage that kind of thing while you are here at Ringling, because trust me, it will be one of the great pleasures of your life. And um, I've been very, very lucky to have a friend and colleague like David Stark. And so I wish you here at Ringling um, the same kind of relationship and long-term friendship that we've had. Um, if you find one, you will really, really be lucky. So um, without much ado, without further ado, my friend and colleague, David Stark.
Uh, thanks uh, very much, uh, Tony and uh, Susie, for those uh, very uh, warm uh, uh, introductions. Uh, and I'm, I'm so pleased to be here tonight. It was great to escape the cold weather of the north. And I know it's supposed to be really cold down here, but uh, uh, it's uh, perfect. Uh, the temperature is perfect as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it's been uh, wonderful. I, I don't think it's been quite 24 hours yet since I've been here. Uh, and I'm loving, I'm loving every minute of it. I'm thrilled that so many people came out tonight, and I really would like to thank the um, College of Art and Design, the uh, Art History faculty, liberal arts faculty and staff, um, Kate Donahue, uh, especially who did so much to uh, make the arrangements for the trip and publicizing the lecture, and um, thank you all for coming out on, is this the eve of a semester break? Uh, not quite, okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> but thank you, uh, regardless, uh, it's, it's wonderful to, to let you do a whole house. And uh, my topic this evening, and I suppose at this point we can lower the lights, and uh, I just wanted to say a few introductory remarks to cover uh, the uh, theme of the lecture, the, uh, the realist tradition uh, in art through the centuries. Um, realism is probably the most uh, accessible, uh, most easily understood artistic mode or style. Um, uh, others might include abstraction, uh, expressionism, uh, but uh, if uh, we look uh, through uh, different periods of art history, different cultures globally, um, the uh, notion of what realism is uh, not very difficult to grasp, but to simply state that it's the, the imitation of the actual appearances in art. Uh, it could be called, it has been called the style of objective accuracy. And I hope to show within the next uh, hour or so um, the uh, way in which realism takes many forms. And that the meaning of the term realism is actually more complex than it may appear at first. And I could actually begin at any number of points in the history of art or with any number of cultures, but I chose to begin this survey with a look at the art of ancient Rome, and particularly uh, portrait heads, like the um, old man uh, on the left and the young woman uh, on the right. Uh, with um, Oh, and by the way, I've tried to color code uh, my uh, captions in so far as coloring those works that are in the Art Institute, works that I'm very familiar with, and I, I can speak with more uh, authority and confidence about, uh, having been there for 18 years, I, I've, I've coded those in green. Um, and so, but these two uh, heads show the distinctive, um, specific features of ancient Roman individuals. Uh, the wrinkles, the creases, the baldness of the man, uh, the woman's face. Uh, she was a uh, pretty woman, even with her broken off nose, but she seems to um, represent very clearly a specific individual rather than an anonymous, indistinguishable type with uh, wide set eyes, her uh, prominent chin, uh, lots of detail in the elaborate braided coiffure that she 